Well, hello and welcome to Talk Leadership with Cedric. You know, everybody needs a little TLC. Talk Leadership with Cedric is where we focus on leadership and personal growth with business leaders, educators, and local thought leaders. Our goal is to introduce our audience to leaders who are making an impact with innovative ideas. Our guiding leadership principle is the law of contribution, which says grow in yourself enables you to grow others. You can't give what you don't have. So first, you must grow yourself in order to grow others. We believe outstanding leaders like yourself will help us help others. So tonight, we have another dynamic leader. And guys, you know that every week I like to do a proper introduction of our guests. So allow me to do a proper introduction of our guest tonight. Azure Blue White is with us tonight. Community is the most important factor in my work. A slogan that Azure Blue White exemplifies in not only her profession, but also her leadership in the community. Born in Atlanta, Georgia and raised in Riverdale, Georgia, she goes above and beyond her calling to be a helper in the world. In 2012, she received her degree from Fort Valley State University in social work with a minor in education. After graduation, she returned to Atlanta to work for a Fortune 500 company where she gained most of her leadership skills and quickly moved up the executive ladder. She is currently a territory manager for Google where she is responsible for sales and marketing for over 110 stores within the Metro Atlanta area. Her passion for community has led her to begin a career in real estate with Palmer House Properties where she helps others build their stories of success through property ownership. She is the founder and chief executive officer of Young Mind Empowerment, Inc., a nonprofit organization that assists in educating youth in areas such as life skills, entrepreneurship, and skills training. She is also a member of the United Way Young Professional Leaders and is currently participating in the Distinguished Spring 2020 cohort of the United Way Leadership Development Program, where she is not um, where she is not helping when she is not helping her community as your blue white enjoys spending time with her family traveling and reading what a wonderful story let's welcome miss azure blue white to the show Thank you so much, Cedric. That was such an awesome introduction. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we have to make sure that I always say I have to do a proper introduction of our guests. So I'm excited for you to be here with us tonight. And I have a lot of family and friends in the Atlanta area. So they're excited to see you as well. So um, let's, um, let's introduce you to some people and just um, welcome you from others, right? Absolutely. Thank you so much. <laughs> awesome. So, you know, tonight, uh, folks, we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff because Azure uh, Blue is really doing some great stuff in Atlanta. And uh, But what I want us to do first is, uh, Azure Blue, tell us um, about your journey to leadership and how did you get to where you are today? Yeah. So <clears throat> along my life, uh, I have always wanted to kind of stay in the background, um, just really be a support system for others. Uh, <laughs> fortunately, unfortunately, um, I've always been pushed to the front lines. Uh, I have never been able to avoid it, no matter what I've done, um, starting from elementary school, leading groups there, uh, middle school, high school, uh, being captain of teams and um, just leaders in local community organizations into college, uh, being a leader among the campus uh, when it came to student government. So um, e that even poured over into uh, my life when it comes to uh, companies that I've worked for. Uh, <laughs> always wanted to kind of stay like entry level position, but I had people that saw something in me that was just like, no, you're a leader. We're going to go ahead and <laughs> get you up this chain, give you the development that you need. And you know, really get you on your way. So 
I, I'm very fortunate that I've had people that saw stuff in me um, and skills in me uh, where they wanted to cultivate that and spend time with me on that and just really mold me into the leader that I am today. So um, I, I always say leadership was born in me. I haven't been able to avoid it. So I was like, hey, let's take the, by the range and we're, we're going to ride this thing out. Well, that is, that is awesome. Well, you know, there's a basketball um, a scout from Baylor University told me many years ago, you know, Cedric, the cream will always rise to the top. So it sounds like that's what happened. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is awesome. Um, you know, I, I've been kind of watching from afar, not stalking, just watching. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, you, you've been on fire selling real estate in Atlanta. I always see you, you know, on video talking about um, real estate. So give the audience an overview of your ideal client and your and your target market market. Um, so my um ideal client is going to be someone that is open to the home buying process, right? Because the process is not always easy, just like life. Mm -hmm. But as long as you have that partner with you, that's willing to hold your hand and one, you being able to take guidance and give feedback when needed um, and take feedback when needed, um, especially in these types of cases. Um, that's definitely my ideal client. Um, I will say my clientele, I, they're, they are pretty awesome people. Um, I haven't met like one client where I was like, oh, what in the world? What are you doing? Um, all, of, all of my clients are pretty freaking awesome um, because they come into um, the home buying process really wanting to go down this journey. And what I offer to my clients is really wanting to help you and help you understand along your journey. Because um, one thing that I do go by in my entire life is that Hey, you don't know what you don't know. Nope. And you don't know the questions to ask when you get there, right? Because you don't know. So I make sure that I am a leader as far as that goes, just leading my client down the road that they need to go and providing that guidance and education that they need to understand each step that is required um, when we're going through this process. So again, is it going to be easy? Absolutely not. But is it going to be fun? Are we going to laugh? Are we going to have a great time going down this road? Absolutely. Well, you know, the, the buying experience, whether you're buying houses, cars, cement or whatever, it's a journey. Right. And it's about right. um, it's about uh, helping that customer enjoy that experience into home ownership. Um, so, you know, I know Atlanta is it's just like Houston. It's big. And um, there are some. Uh, the markets that are like on fire and some that are like kind of lukewarm and some that are kind of like uh, not so much right now. So give us a sense of the Atlanta market. What, what's the current hot spots um, for buying a house in, in Atlanta? Ooh, let me tell you something. Um, I think everywhere uh, in the metro Atlanta area right now is a pretty hot spot. Um, I have clients that are buying all the way and coming to Alpharetta um, all the way down to Macon. And there really hasn't been a situation where we haven't been in a multiple offer situation. Um, so the, the market period in Georgia is on fire. Why? Because you have some really great value um, that's coming to the market right now. And then you have an influx of people that are moving here. You have people that are moving from the West Coast here. I've been seeing a lot of Californians, a lot of New Yorkians um, coming down into the state, uh, really interested in investing for the most part, but then also um, you have a lot of people that are living in the city that are moving out into the outskirts. So where you saw people really wanting to move to um, downtown Atlanta, Buckhead, uh, Vinings, um, those, those types of areas are now moving to Union City, East Point, uh, Decatur, um, uh, McDonough. So all your Henry County, Rockdale County, uh, Fulton County outskirts are, are, I mean, they are 
on fire. Like I'm literally way like crossing my hands right now. I have two offers out there and I'm like, Lord, just let us have enough buying power to be able to compete in this market because it's crazy right now, especially for those who want to list their home. Oh my God, if you are in the state of Georgia and you're not listing your home, I don't know what you want to do if you want to move because right now is the perfect time. So it's a seller's market then. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. All right. So if you if you're even thinking, uh, listen to what she just said. If you're even thinking about selling your house, you need to go ahead and put it on the market because now is the prime time to get it. And now, but don't just put it on the market now. You need to call Azure Blue White. Absolutely. Your house. Absolutely. I'm I'm gonna give you an example. A lot of these homes are not even uh on lasting on the market uh, for days like they're lasting on the market for hours wow hours yeah i i took a client out to a listing that posted on friday that had multiple offers by saturday morning wow well <laughs> you can't beat that i'm trying to put this out on, on facebook so let me ask you this right quick what if someone wanted to get in contact with you how would they do that? Because I want to put that in the comments so that. Absolutely. So you have a couple of ways. You can give me a call um, always at 678-215-8818. Or you can visit my website at www.TheEliteLuxuryGroup.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook, Azure Blue White. I have a a personal page and a business page by the same name. Also, I have an Instagram page. I am Azure Blue. Azure Blue. Um, and so, you know, that name is just unique, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I've been getting that my entire life. But the story <laughs> is, I always knew when a teacher reached my name on the role, no matter what order the role was in, because they would always look at the paper and say, Hmm, breathe in deep. <laughs> and by the time they let out that last piece of air, I'd be like, yep, it's Azure Blue. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about it, teacher. I got you back. I'm going to help you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Being the leader I am, I had to take the rain. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. So, folks, in the comment section, her number is there 678 215 8818. You have it there. Her website is the elite luxury group.com. You can also, you see her name on the screen. You can find her on Facebook. Uh, you said Instagram as well. Yep. I am Azure blue. I am Azure blue. I, I, I'm going to say before we move on, if you are thinking of listing your house, you need to call Azure blue at six, seven, eight, two, one, five, Eight eight one eight. If you are thinking of listing your house, she said the market is hot. Not days, not weeks, not months, hours, folks. Hours. Awesome. On the that is awesome. So, you know, this is a uh, this this pandemic right now is crazy, right? Um, so, if some if someone um, was worried about how they're going to sell their house, list their house, have people come in and visit their house during this pandemic. How has how has um, how have you and uh, your company adjusted to showing houses in this in this time? Yes. Yeah, so at the very beginning, a lot of people were very skeptical skeptical about going out into the field. So what we offered were virtual tours. So essentially we just booked your appointment. When we went to the home, we get right on FaceTime or um, whichever video chat uh, app that you would like to use. I literally purchased them all just to make sure that I could uh, provide full service to my clients. We would walk through that home. Um, I encouraged my clients to just drive by just to make sure that you checked out the neighborhood, you checked out the outside of the home. I took care of the inside of the home. I took personalized pictures. Of course, they could take advantage of the uh, staged pictures that were on MLS um, that I sent them as well, just to make sure that they could um, 
get the full scope of the home. Um, at Towards the end of the process, once we put the home under contract, they were able to uh, do a walkthrough where the owners removed themselves from the home. Um, we uh, had uh, shoe covers, gloves, uh, your mask. So, um, and I provided hand sanitizer as well as um, any sprays that were needed at that time just to make sure that my client was safe um, and they knew what they were purchasing. <clears throat> On the flip side of that, coming towards the future, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, like I told you guys a little earlier and alluded to, um, yeah, people aren't out here uh, scared to go into homes anymore. So we're a lot more traffic and a lot more movement on the market now. So. <clears throat> what we are seeing is that homeowners are providing those uh, little essentials to the home when you go and visit the property, um, as well as, of course, we safe guide our clients. So if you don't have a mask or gloves, we also provide that for you as well. Look at that full service. You forget your mask at home. No problem. No worry. We have you covered. You forget your gloves at home. No worries. We have you covered. That's awesome. Now that's, that's, that's what, the elite luxury group provides for you that is that's awesome yes absolutely safety is of the utmost importance and we want to make sure that our clients are fully taken care of and are comfortable along their journey fully okay all right and houses that you're selling you're selling from what's the price range you guys um uh, sell in uh <laughs> We well, we work with investors. Um, we've had investor properties uh, for as low as like fifty five thousand. We work all the way up into your million dollar listing. So okay. anywhere in between there, also. Okay, so then there you go, folks. There you go, folks. You don't have to worry about it. She can list you from five dollars to one hundred and five million, right? So okay. it's you got a range. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no biases here. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. So, um, uh, you know, uh, leaders come in all different sizes, different packages with different strengths, right? So what are some of the strengths do you feel that are important for successful leaders to have? Um, I'm going to say of uh, most importance is going to be negotiation. When I mean negotiation, I don't necessarily mean it in the business aspect. I mean it with yourself as well, because we as people, even though we don't realize it, we're negotiating at all times. We're negotiating our time with other people. We're negotiating ourselves with ourselves. We're always talking. You have about twenty five hundred thousand thoughts that go to, uh, through your mind every single day and you're negotiating with yourself whether you want to do something or not so as a leader you um, also need to have discipline so within that negotiation are you sticking to the plan that you set in place um, for your time management as well so not only are you uh, you're trying to negotiate uh, with those people that are like pulling on you as a leader you need to be able to negotiate with yourself and understand what's going to be good for you throughout your day and what's not going to be good for you. That is um, that is is awesome. So negotiation skills, because you negotiate with yourself for your time um, and then well, you go you negotiate your time and then you also negotiate with yourself. But then the second thing uh, she said is you need to have discipline. Wow. Absolutely. If uh, you do yourself a disjustice, if you are a leader um, in anything and you don't have discipline because you are a reflection to those that look up to you and those that look to you towards your leadership. So if you are not dependable and people can't count on you and you aren't disciplined, what how how do you expect those people to mirror behaviors back to you? Oh, 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 she just hit you right upside the head. If you are not disciplined, how do you expect your followers, your teams, your families to be disciplined? Wow. All right. Leaders have to lead by example. I love it. Um, so, you know, um, tell us, you have a nonprofit that I, I found out about when I was reading your bio. So uh, your, your mind empowerment. Tell us about Your Mind Empowerment. Yes, yeah, so originally where Your Mind Empowerment comes from is full disclosure, a couple of years ago, I was going through a really, really tough time in my life. Um, I had 
literally become a single mother of three children. At that time, my uh, children were uh, five, two, and one. Um, and that became a really hard time for me because I was trying to navigate the world, um, especially being a young mother also, uh, just trying to navigate the world and business, navigate the world uh, with my children, navigate the world with myself, most importantly. Um, so in any case, you have to use your mind to figure out what you want to do. I found myself in a position where I was really kind of trying to depend on everyone around me to give the answers that I could only find for myself. Um, so once I really kind of dug in and found out what I needed to do and realized what I needed to do and the path that I needed to take for me and my purpose that I feel that I was put on this earth for, the thought of your mind came to my mind. <laughs> and what I wanted to do with that was empower your mind. So that's where your mind empowerment comes from. Um, then I had to think, OK, so who do I want to empower and what audience do I want to speak to? And my target has always been to you because we can't do anything without them, really. Um, the world does operate with, do operate with adults, but once you can't fill that position anymore, who is to come behind you? Who are those guided souls that are gonna be taking care of you once you have to give up your throne or your position? Wouldn't you want those people to be a reflection of what you've learned in your life to be able to be productive citizens? Wouldn't you want them to show you compassion and care as you've shown in your business? Wouldn't you want them to be well-informed and um, be active and productive decision makers um, for when you have to uh, lay, lay down your title. Um, so that's where my focus on youth came from, not being that we are uh, totally blocked off to helping others, but youth are our starting points because we have to definitely instill those skills within our youth so that they can carry on and that they will be an example for the next generation that comes in. Absolutely. Um, well, you know, anytime you're working with youth, I absolutely um, love it, and um, that, that's exciting that that you um, have uh, embarked on on this mission. Um, so, what's what's the age group? Say again. What's the the age group? So the age groups are between the ages of uh, twelve and twenty one. And the reason why I chose that is because for our 12 through 18 year olds, we really focus on those life skills that you need to know. I'm going to give you an example. Um, I met a young lady a couple of years ago that I've been mentoring, um, kind of like on the sidelines. And when I first met her, she did not know how to write a check. I met her when she was 13. Oh, wow. She didn't even know what checks were. She did not know um, that you needed a bank account to withdraw money. She just kind of thought that everyone carried around cash. Mm -hmm. um, she didn't necessarily know the importance of um, knowing yourself. Um, she didn't know anything about, she didn't necessarily come from a household where um, her family cooked healthy meals. Um, she kind of had to fend for herself. Well, she is now 17 years old and I am little, I'm so proud of her because she is on her way to college. She's actually, she graduated early this year. Oh, wow. So she graduated a year early. Um, she's headed off to college, but most importantly, she's headed off to college with the skills for her to be able to succeed. Um, and those are uh, being able to make good decisions, knowing who and um, what is good for you, um, even when it comes to people, different types of personalities, different types of organizations that you want to be tied to. Um, you know how to make right and wrong decisions when it comes to money. She's well aware of um, she actually did her uh, FAFSA application herself. She's very well aware of uh, interest rates how how that's going to affect her after she graduates. She's already looking into the home purchasing process. Um, she's interested in being a real estate investor at such an early age. Um, so I'm just honored that I was able to give her the skills that she needed to be productive. 
And I just want to multiply that over and over and over again with the youth that are uh, involved in our program now. Wow. Well, that is awesome. That's an awesome story. Uh, first of all, uh, the transformation that happened uh, in that young lady. And um, she, you know, uh, data says that uh, uh, youth that are that have mentors are 90 percent more likely to become a mentor themselves. They are 130 percent more likely to become leaders in an organization. So that is awesome. Yes, absolutely. That's our mission is to just cultivate leaders throughout, because at the end of the day, um, exposure is important. Exposure is important. Um, being able to, again, I can't stress this enough, make good, dis informed decisions, um, not only on uh, the people that are around you, what you're doing, um, but financially as well, because I think that's one of the number one thing that really holds community back period is just being able to be financially stable and in a good position to actually make the decisions that you need to make. You're absolutely right about that, 100%. Um, so if uh, a parent, well, let me ask you just before I ask that, is this for girls and boys or just girls? So we have a girls group and we also have a boys group as well. Okay, great. All right. I'm glad you didn't leave the guys out. All right. That's perfect. No, we're definitely not needing them back. Uh, we definitely need them. We definitely need them. So no, we're not leaving them out. Awesome. So if a parent wanted to reach you, do they call 678-215-8818 also? Yes, they can. They can also email at yourmindempowerment at gmail.com. Your mind. I'm going to type that in as well. Empowerment at Gmail. Okay. Yes. And with your mind, it's you are not the in, entire your. It's you are empowerment. At gmail. Okay. Your mind empowerment. Okay. Perfect. Um, let me uh, put your number in the chat again. Parents call 678. 215-8818. Perfect. Um, so, you know, good leaders ask great questions. Oh, by the way, Anthony Beach said he shared this on his uh, Facebook page as well so that uh, pe more people can uh, hear about um, your uh, nonprofit organization. Oh, thank you so much, Anthony. Um, so good leaders ask great questions. What has been uh, some of the best questions that you have asked or people have asked you to help you along your, your journey? Yeah. Um, I think the best question anyone has ever asked me was, where are you going and what's your purpose? A lot of people don't know what that is. Um, a lot of people think they know what it is because at the time that I was asked the question, I thought I knew what my purpose was as well. Um, I thought that my purpose was I wanted to be a businesswoman. I wanted to um, just make a lot of money. <laughs> Nothing that benefited my community um, and my purpose. So with that being said, um, that was the most important question because it really sparked in me to really search inside of me to really find out what I wanted to do in life. Well, you know, understanding your purpose, we, we tell uh, kids all the time, if you understand your why, you're going to find your way. And um, so that, that that's a very good question. Where are you going and what is your purpose? So young people out there today, uh, parents out there today, ask your kids this question. Where are you going and what is your purpose? Now, adults, we also want you to ask yourself that question. Where are you going and what is your purpose? And also, I want to add in, it's OK if you don't know. It's all right. Today, and, and when I ask people this question and they don't know how to answer it, I always say, to, well, today's your lucky day because today is the first day of the rest of your life. Your purpose will change, 
right? So our purpose at 18 that we thought that it was probably won't be the same purpose at 30. And your purpose at 30 probably won't be the same pur purchase at 50 or above. So it, throughout life, you are going to take different avenues. So, yeah. but just remember from the day that you decide you're going to do something is the day that is the first day of the rest of your life. Absolutely. There are two, the two best days in everyone's life. John Maxwell says this all the time. The two best days in someone's life is the day that they were born and the day that they find out what their purpose is. Yes. That is awesome. 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 So, so tonight folks, we are with Azure Blue White, who is here to help educate us one on real estate. Um, she's also here to talk about leadership, mindset, abundance, living, but she's also here to drop some knowledge about her group, Your Mind Empowerment. And um, let me tell you what, folks, if you are in the Atlanta area, listen to me clearly. If you're in the Atlanta area and you're looking to sell your house, I already have the person you need to call. You don't even need to look any farther. You don't need to do any more interviews. She's right here in front of you tonight. You can reach her at 678-215-8818 or at, uh, uh, online at The Elite Luxury Group. It, it even sounds good. That's what you want to post your, you know, put your house, um, uh, put your house on the market with The Elite Luxury Group. .com. Yes. Awesome. 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 So what are two or three things that uh, a buyer should do before they contact you? Decide on whether they're a ready and willing buyer. Because um, a lot of times people start this uh, journey into home ownership and realize that they don't necessarily want to purchase a home at this time. And, it, and it, that's perfectly fine. Um, so the first thing to do is to uh, number one, make sure that you have your taxes together because um, that's going to come up. Uh oh. Uh, make sure at least two years. <laughs> um, make sure that you have access to your W 2s. You're also going to need to make sure that uh, you have 30 days worth of pay stubs in most cases. Another thing is watch your debt to income. A lot of lenders want to see 50% or below. Um, a few lenders go a little above that, but you at least a safe spot is about 50% debt to income. That's going to keep you, that's going to keep you pretty safe. Okay. All right. So I, I, I have to make sure that, Hey, if I'm going to go buy a house, I got to get all these things in order. I can just show up and say, Hey, make it happen for me. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes. You can work miracles, but yeah, some things you just can't do just yet, right? Yes. Uh, all right. So, um, so now on the on the opposite side, what are two or three things that the seller should do to get prepared um, before they contact you? Yeah. Um, so let's talk about if you really want to sell your home. Is it a need or is it a want? Um, if it's a need, uh, definitely we can uh, fast track you. Um, if it is a want, start disconnecting yourself from your home, because what we're going to start doing is really find your dream home, your next dream home. So your dream home is going to be someone else's dream home. OK, <laughs> so we kind of have to disconnect from that, um, because when we list your home, you're going to need to take down some of those pictures. We're going to need to spruce stuff up to, you know, be appealing to buyers. OK, and a lot of people, believe it or not, they have a hard time kind of separating separating from their items um, when it comes time to list their home. Um, but it's for not only your good, but to help the buyer out because they need to envision themselves in your home just as you envisioned yourself in your home when you first purchased it. Sure. Absolutely. I remember when we were getting, or my company was getting ready to move us from Chicago back to Texas. I We put some uh, we lived on the lake in Chicago and, and we put out some some um, uh, uh, swimming gear and all of this stuff, you know, for people to get ready for their, their to, to get on the lake. We put some uh, cinnamon rolls in the oven right before we left. So when they came in, they had that smell it's like, oh, my God, I'm home. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
Absolutely. You want someone to envision your home being their home. <laughs> so <I love> the <laughs> <curve> appeal. <laughs> yes, after they purchase it, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, hey, Damon, Damian uh, Johnson is, is online and he says, what if you're self-employed? What do you what do you do? So you're going to need to make sure that your uh, two years taxes are um, uh, in line. You want to make sure that your bank statements align with the income that's coming into your business as well. Um, so just look out for that. Um, Damien, I can get you some more specifics from a lender. Um, if you reach out to me, you're more than welcome to send me a DM and I can send you uh, some more information on how business loans uh, are approved. Okay. Awesome. Well, I know Damien and I'm sure he will uh, follow up uh, on that um, uh, as well. So uh, awesome. So the law of intentionality says, I love this, this, this leadership principles. Law of intentionality says growth doesn't just happen. You must be intentional. He says, um, so what do you do uh, for personal and professional growth? <laughs> so I'm I'm really super big on uh, personal and professional growth. So I make sure that I'm in the know. Um, so on the professional side, I make sure that I'm reading uh, books that hone my skills on my profession. I'm reading magazine articles that are telling me the information that I want to know about my market. Um, I'm connecting and building relationships with those uh, people that are impactful within my community and my profession um, and that are linked to my profession uh, so that I can make sure that I am fully informed so that I can translate that to not only my clientele, but from my knowledge as well. Um, my slogan is always, I want to be known for being the best at what I do. I can only do that with having connections within my profession for those people who have um, come before me to just pass that knowledge down. Um, when it comes to personal, my head is always in a book. I wish I could pull up my Audible, uh, <laughs> my Audible subscription for you all. I have at least 250 books. A lot of them are consistent with um, John Maxwell. I really enjoy The 15 Laws of Growth. Um, and that's a book that I would definitely read over and over and over again, um, because every time I read it, and I've read it about four times now, I always seem to find something new out about myself and finding uh, that I'm asking myself uh, questions that I didn't ask the first time I read, or um, I'm seeing like a new word. I kind of glanced over. I'm like, wow, that was impactful. Um, so I'm always striving personally to find those things that are impactful to my life, learning from others um, that came before me and those uh, that stand beside uh, what they know, um, really kind of digging into their lives and seeing how they correlate and they cross over each other um, for experience. Because another slogan that I go by is, hey, why do I need to make the mistake if you've already made it. I want to learn from you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I love that slogan. Yeah, like there's no need for me to like have yeah, all these mistakes. And um, when you've already done it for me, you've already made the mistakes, you've already made the slip ups. I'm going to learn from you, from watching you, getting the information from you and just applying that power shift to my life. Absolutely. I love that. So let me say this. for Let me sum up what she said. One, personal growth and development in your in, in, growth and development in your personal life and your professional life is very important. The next thing she said is read, read, read. And when you're tired of reading, read some more. Yes, yes. And it doesn't matter. Read the same books over and over again, because the first um, the first lesson that you learn from the first book may not have been the lesson that you're going to learn because you might have been in two different, two or three different places at the time that you read. So the time that you read again, you'll be in a completely different um, mindset. Um, I always say, hey, if you knew me in January, you don't know me now. <laughs> I'm a completely different person. I have a completely different mindset. I'm on a completely different path. And I continue to hone my path. I continue to hone those skills. I continue to hone the relationships as I go because I'm always focused on the target, but the target has different pathways to getting there. And every single day I choose which path I want to go down. 
Look at that, folks. If you're not picking up what Azure Blue is laying down, I don't know what you're listening to, but she is laying down some pure gold here tonight. So I want you to go back and rewind this later on and come right to this section right here. It's going to inspire you. It's going to motivate you. It's going to empower you to do something different in your life. It's going to inspire you. It's going to motivate you. It's going to inspire you to help do something different for someone else. That's what really abundance living and abundance mindset is all about. So I'm hoping you're you're enjoying this. I'm really in, in, enjoying this. Um, so is home ownership something for everyone? No. Mm -mm, absolutely not. Um, but I also feel that uh, people don't necessarily understand what home ownership means. So just because you own a home um, or don't own a home doesn't mean that you are not a homeowner. Um, and I think that people kind of just um, focus in on the traditional idea of what a home is. Um, a home for you might be a townhome. A home for you might be a condo. Um, a home for you might not mean um, a four bedroom, three and a half bath with a white picket fence. Home ownership doesn't mean the uh, same for each person. But what it does mean is wealth and personal development and goal setting. That's what it does, because at any case in your life, real estate is always going to be a need. No matter what century you're in, no matter what time you've grown up in, real estate will always be something that you're going to absolutely need because everyone is going to need a place to stay. And being a homeowner really gives you the golden nugget and the golden key to be able to capitalize off of that at any moment. Um, just like um, uh, Gary, oh, what is his name? Uh, he uh, has 10X. Oh, you're talking about uh, Grant Cardone. Yes, I'm sorry, Grant Cardone. Look, he's one of the people I, I always follow. I couldn't remember his name. Thank you so much. For that. Um, but Grant Cardone, he says one of his slogans is, hey, rent where you live um, or sorry, rent out your home and rent where you live so that you can live for free. That is absolutely true. <laughs> so in any case, you have the option to live for free. You just got to figure out how you're going to do that. Right. And uh, real estate is definitely the key to that is definitely a key to wealth. Um, I know I've been in some tight spaces uh, in my short lifetime where real estate really kind of saved my life and uh, really kind of gave me the capital and the cash that I needed at the time that I needed it. Um, so at any case, uh, real estate is always a good, good path to go down, in my opinion. Yes, I 100% agree with you. And one of the things that that you uh, touched on here is, uh, you know, buying real estate. Um, and and what I like to add here for people who are, who are Christian believers, but they just don't believe that it's for them. It's it it's, it says it right in Proverbs 13 and 22: A good man or woman leaves an inheritance for his children's children. See when you get some real estate, now you can leave a legacy, not just leave a bill or an invoice. Yep. You leave them something that will have power. I want to add to this. If you ever have ch a chance to buy a land or real estate on a water, natural body of water, always do it because what's going to happen is it's going to do this always do it. I love the advice that you're giving. This is awesome. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, so and I, I definitely want to tag into what you said um, about family and making sure that you have something to pass down. Um, because coincidentally, when uh, my grandmother passed away, I didn't even know that she had multiple properties uh, once she passed away. And she left me the executor of all of those properties that she had. And guess what that helped me do? <laughs> it helped uh, generational wealth. And so now I'll be able to pass those um, properties down to my child. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. That is what, um, especially in our community, that's what we need to do more of pass along generational wealth and not just generational debt. 
Um, so I, I absolutely love that. Um, yeah, making sure that that plan is in place. Um, I'm not sure if I could have navigated uh, through that entire experience if she had not set the stage for me to be successful upon her demise. Awesome. Um, that, that's that's about legacy building right there. Um, so what advice would you give an emerging leader? You know, those young leaders coming up through the ranks right now, what advice would you give them uh, of finding uh, leadership opportunities and way to ways to fill their professional toolbox? Um, so the first thing that I would say is um, as humans, Every single day, we do the best that we can with the resources that we have available. With that being said, um, I would say, make sure that you do your research. Make sure that you are fully informed. As youth, um, adrenaline is high, hormones are high. You make rash decisions <laughs> without thinking that it can affect you long-term. But I would say that I think the trends are actually going up in this now. I'm seeing a lot of young leaders coming up and informing themselves really about what is going on and how it's going to affect their lives in the long term because they're having a better idea of what their life looks like at 40, 50 or 60. So I advise all the young leaders out there to um just actually kind of come up with a game plan, even though if you don't know what you want to do, try, try to access a game plan um, about where you think that you want to be in life, what those different paths are, find people who have uh, taken those paths before and really just going, um, following the example and those people and especially following the example of those people that have been successful because a lot of people out here uh, blow a lot of smoke mm -hmm. and um, can really make their situation seem good. But my thing is, hey, if you're going to be one of my mentors, show me your bank account because I know where I want mine to be. Yeah. So if you're going to mentor me in finances. I want to see your bank account. I want to know what you're working with. If you're if you're an expert in stocks, show me your stocks. I want to see you know how you've benefited off of that. Mm -hmm. Show me your receipts from that. If you're going to mentor me in personal development, I want to know who you are at the core because I don't want a mentor that doesn't have their stuff together trying to get me together. Yeah, you're absolutely <laughs> right about that. So, you know, I, I normally let the guests lead these type things and I don't try to interject too much here, but I do have, I, cause I agree with you 100%. So um, I, what, what I, I, I get all the time, um, um, in, investment houses or, or uh, finance guys try to call me and say, hey, we want to help manage your portfolio. And and I always say, well, I, I've been doing good all by myself so far. Um, and then they continue to try to press. So here's a question I always ask. Now, I don't care because they'll tell me how much money they're managing for their company. And I'll say, I, I don't care how much you're managing for your company. I just want to know, do you personally have at least two million dollars? Not for your company, but in your personal account. And so far, 100 percent of the time, they've always said no. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, then you can't help me because I'm already there. So I need someone that has been there and that's at 10 because that's where I'm trying to go. Exactly. Exactly. I always say, hey, the famous slogan is, if you want to be a millionaire, you better hang out with billionaires because they've been there, done that. They're on a whole another level. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Magic Johnson said that a billionaire told him uh, early on that the same amount of time that it takes to make a million is the same amount of time it takes one billion. So you might as well spend your time Oh, I'm trying to make that billion. Yeah, <laughs> right. there's always steps in the journey, but um, uh, I, I love that advice that that you're giving. So, um, uh, uh, Mary Miller says, passing on. She was just commenting on your passing on generational wealth is the key to lineage, solid foundation, and passing on wealth, not debt. Right? Um, yeah. And Damian Johnson was like, hey, show me the money, the stocks, the proof that you have credibility to mentor me. 
Yeah, you have a lot of life coaches out here and that's great. But I want to know that you have accomplished what I, I want to accomplish because I cannot possibly come to the table with you and you guide me because that's considered the blind leading the blind. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't work out too well. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Uh, so I absolutely love that advice. And I'm glad you said it because um, sometimes people don't hear me if I say that, but I, I'm glad you said it. So uh, I just repeated what she said. Right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's amazing that we're talking about that because the next question is, do you have a mentor? And if yes, how has that mentor impacted your um, either personal or professional journey? Yeah. So I don't have a mentor. I have mentors. <laughs> I have okay. mentors. Um, and I have about I have about 12 mentors, uh, not to take anything away from each one, because each one of those mentors serve a purpose in my life. I have a financial mentor. I have a mental mentor. I have an emotional mentor. I have a real estate mentor. I have an investor mentor. <laughs> anything that I'm involved in, um, I have a nonprofit mentor. Um, anything that I have been involved in, I have a mentor to guide me along the way. Because like I said, my whole thing is there is no need for me to make the mistakes that someone else has made. Um, and I really feel like mentorship is something that our community really takes for granted um, because we all kind of just kind of want to jump out there ourselves, um, ask the question, oh, well, hey, how'd you, how'd you get there? And really expecting someone to um, print the blueprint um, and it's an easy path, but no path is easy, especially one that's worth uh, gaining. So um, with that being said, you are going to have some trials and tribulations along the way. And it just helps that you have someone else by your side that has gone through that um, and really knows how to help you and has the resources to be able to help you. Because I can tell you all day to go to a website, but that doesn't mean that I know exactly what I'm talking about when I say go to the website. And we're, we're both uh, hunting at that point. So uh, it's just nice to be able to have that. Plus, um, on the flip side of that, as far as mentorship, uh, relationships period in life are uh, just important to have um, because you never know what you might bring to someone else and you never know what someone else might be able to bring to you and how you may be able to impact their lives because just because you think someone is at a higher level than you or can offer you way more than um, what you can offer them doesn't mean that you can't contribute to something at all. I know um, I, I make a point to uh, be an accountability partner to the mentors that I have. And when they tell me that they want to reach a goal, I'm on their phone talking about, hey, hey, did you do what we talked about in our last session, the last time we talked? Are you still on course? And, you know, sometimes we uh, want to receive, but we don't want to reciprocate. And I think that's really what life wait, is. Wait, wait, wait. Say, say that again. Say that again right there. I love that. Yeah, sometimes we we more want to receive what we're looking for and not want to reciprocate that. And life is really about pouring out to others, because the more you pour out to others, the more that you're going to get, period, point blank. Absolutely. Um, you know, Jim Rohn always says, if you help someone get what they want, they will help you get what you want. And John Maxwell says, everything worthwhile is uphill. So, yeah. <laughs> excuse me. So you have to be willing to put in the work to get to where you want to be. There's no free rides. There's no such thing as something for nothing. Yeah. So equity is very important to me. Very, very important to me. Um, I, I go into every situation um, really not expecting anything. Yes, I want um, to be able to gain the knowledge that you have. But at the end of the day, my goal is what can I attribute to you? Um, because that is what I feel that my life purpose is. No matter who you are, where you come from and where you're going, you're always going to need a cheerleader by your side. And I feel that in any situation, whomever I meet or whoever I connect with, consider me your personal cheerleader, because if, why am I here if I can't pour into you? And just pouring out to people just makes them want to pour back into you even more so. Absolutely. And, you know, you hit on something that that's the reason why 
talk leadership with Cedric. You know, everybody needs a little TLC, but that's why we're here um, is because I like to pour into others. That's why I have a guest versus me just behind the mic talking, right? Um, I want to help other people get their word, the word out of what they're doing because people are doing some, there's some people doing some great stuff out there, right? Um, so my my role is to help get the word out what Azure Blue White is doing in Atlanta, what she's doing with young people, what she's doing in a professional life. All of, I, I love that type stuff, celebrating other people. So, um, but I also need cheerleaders. So I'm looking forward to you being a cheerleader. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. I'm everybody. I'm the world's cheerleader. I promise you I am. We're going to get through this together. Come on. Hold my hand. Let's go. <laughs> awesome. 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 So, you know, um, uh, we've all had times where we failed at one thing or another. Um, I, I tell a story uh, in, in videos or an audience when I'm speaking uh, about my failures and, and, and um, um, but tell us a, about a time that you had a failure and the lesson you learned from it and how you overcame that. Yeah, uh, I have failures every day. The last time I had a failure today was uh, I overcooked my rice and it turned out gummy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, but no, um, I have I have failures every single day. Um, but from that failure, I take pride in those simply because they were nothing but learning lessons to guide me on my path of where I'm going and what I have to do. Um, failure are um, so. What I really learned from failure is that I can always get back up and do it again. Um, just in this, I'm, I'm only 30, but just in these short years of life, I have started eight different companies and 39 profits. Did they all succeed? Absolutely not. But did I learn so that my next business that I established um, was good? Absolutely. Um, and so that's something that I take pride in because people will be like, oh, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, this didn't work out or that didn't work out. I'm like, OK, but look where I am now. <laughs> look at the success that I'm having now. And I would never have had that success if I hadn't gone through the experience that I went through. Yes, absolutely. Well, failure just sets you up for the comeback. Right. Um, if you don't give up. Uh, and unfortunately, unfortunately, a lot of people uh, give up uh, too early, um, and when they have a setback, then they go into "woe is me" mindset, pity party mindset. Instead of you know what, this is I learned these things, these three or five things from this lesson. Now let me go and do it even better, uh, because now I have some. My grandmother would say some learning behind me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I, I think to fuel that, uh, we just live in a microwave society where everyone thinks, oh, well, you know, it's supposed to work out for me in a year, or it's supposed to work out for me the first six months that I start. And when I come across a lot of people that are like, oh, well, you know, it didn't work. And I'm like, okay, well, how long, you know, did you do it for? And they're like, oh, well, you know, I did it for the first three months and, you know, I gained no traction. Gotcha. So when I first became a real estate agent, <laughs> when I first got my license, I didn't have my first client in my first four to five months. But did I say, no, I'm not going to uh, do real estate anymore? Absolutely not. What did I do? I pulled up my bootstraps. I got back in the streets. I grinded. I got my social media together. And guess what? I have I have three contracts that are supposed to close this month. I had one last month, like uh, got got six more pre approvals pending. So was it a me? Absolutely not. But was I going to give up? Absolutely not. You um, also have to look at other people that were successful. Uh, OK, so let's take Bill Gates. He worked on Apple for what, 15 years mm -hmm. before Apple became Apple. So I'm like, look, if he made it in 15, I'm going to cut that in half. I, I, <laughs> I, I got to make it in seven and a half years. OK, so, you know, um, 
yeah, I, again, we just live in a microwave society where everyone thinks it's going to come instant, but you have to put in the work. You have to put in the sweat equity. Nothing comes easy and you have to stick to it. Now, after year, you know, four or five, if it's not working, hey, we might need to, you know, move on to something else um, and just reevaluate ourselves. But giving up just in the beginning, is not going to work. You're going to set yourself up for um, definite, indefinite failure at that point. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, this, I mean, we've been going for an hour already. It's amazing how this time really just passed. I've thoroughly enjoyed having you on the show tonight. Um, and I'm hoping that you had a good time as well. Yes, I absolutely did. We have to do this again. <laughs> uh, awesome. Well, that that's folks. You heard that, right? She said she she's coming back. So you mark that down now. Um, absolutely. <laughs> so, hey, Tell us what's next for you. Oh, Lord. I don't know. You're going to have to ask me in the morning. Uh, <laughs> um, what's next? So uh, what my goals are is that um, I want to become a number one producer within the state of Georgia. Uh, what's next after that is nationally. Um, I want to be known as a powerhouse Um in real estate, not only as a professional, um, but also as an investor. So I'm definitely working on my portfolio. Um, when it comes to your mind empowerment, uh, my goal is to grow and to touch as many youth as possible and to develop and cultivate um, all the leaders as I possibly can. And that I want that to be over a lifetime. So that's not just a, um, a couple of year thing. That's a, that's a life goal for me because that's my passion, just being able to develop and help others and just pass down the skills that I've learned because I, I think that's a really big gap um, in community period where, you know, people are kind of like, I want to keep all of this to myself. But uh, uh, something that I go by is it doesn't matter what information you give out to others. No one will ever be able to do what you can do because your mind is individual and it's unique in every single way that you can possibly imagine. So perception is reality and you will be able to succeed like no other person. Well, that is awesome. And I only wish that you become number one in Georgia and nationally soon. So you've already set your mind to it. So I know that you're gonna uh, accomplish it. I just, again, wanna say Azure Blue, thank you very much for um, coming on the show, educating our audience. Audience, if you enjoyed listening to Azure Blue White tonight, I just want you to say yes in the comments. We wanna send her away with some love. Just say yes in the comments. And um, so one last question for you. It's just a wild card question. I always throw it out there. So when you just sit back, you're relaxing at home with the kids, what, what's, what's the dessert that you like? <laughs> Cheesecake. <laughs> that was easy. One. That was easy one. I would eat an entire cheesecake by myself. Yes. Oh wow, an entire yeah. cheesecake by yourself. Okay. Yeah. And my kids know if I have some cheesecake in the house, they better not touch. You better get popsicle or a cookie or something. So let you, say, you, better, you better not. You better not. That's mommy's thing. Oh wow, that is awesome. Well, again, thank you very much. Um, hey, folks, look. We, we talked about a lot of stuff here tonight. If you're looking to put a house on the market in Atlanta area, you need to call Azure White, uh, Azure Blue White. Her number is in the comment section. Her email is in the comment section. Their website is in the comment section. If you're youth, if you, you if you have a young person at, and they're looking to get involved with a empowerment organization, then you need to um, send a, a call Azure Blue or send her an email. Now, on a serious note, folks, we need to understand that the way that we change our lives, the way that we change our future, the way that we change our family's life is through finance. If we control our finance, then we'll control our life, all right? Investing 101, the next steps to one, the steps to 1 million is coming up on July 25th. So winning with money is 80% behavior, 20% head knowledge. That means what you do with money is more important than what you have in your, in your brains. 
All right. Those who control their finances, control their life, learn to develop the good habits of money management and investing um, in, uh, in, in, in invest in yourself and come to this powerful webinar. You know that this webinar is no charge to you. It's not about the money. It's about the education that I want to pour into you. I'm going to teach you some things. I'm not going to ask you to buy one thing. I just want to help you understand how to go from broke to millionaire. Not because I read it in a book, folks. Not because somebody told me one day, but because I did it. Yes, broke to being a multimillionaire. I'm going to show you in this webinar, Investing 101, The Steps to One Million. The uh, link to it is in the comment section. It's Saturday, July 25th, 9 to 1030 uh, a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. Thank you again for tuning in tonight. If you're not at the table, you are on the menu. Don't be on the menu. So I will see you uh, at our next show. And again, thank you very much for tuning in.